Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from AnthonyMorganti.com and this is episode 140 of Photo Critiques. And in this episode, I'm pleased to critique the work of Sabid Habid. Sabid sent me in some interesting shots, and this first one is kind of a park scene. We have this pond here, or lake, and we have this park area. People are walking. Uh, it's you know, we could see the city in the background. And I'm going to show you about like three, four of his images, and then I'm going to comment on uh, all of them kind of at once. So we have this one here, and I want you to take a note at um, the light. The light is over here, and it's kind of high in the sky. And then we go to the next one, and it's a um, little better light in this one than that one. This one's a little bit more uh, flattering. We have really some nice reflections in this shot, and we have some nice leading lines to help lead you through the shot. Then we have this shot here, and we have another nice leading line coming this way, and we have some interesting stuff, very nice reflections again. And then we have this shot of the, of the city, you know, taken from, you know, the observation area of another building looking down on the city. And as we could see, just uh, take a look at that. Now we'll go to this one, which is another view of the same, you know, area again. And I think that's the last one that I wanted to mention, yeah, in this bunch. Now a couple things. I mentioned light before, and there's kind of usually three big general things in, a, in any photograph. You have the um, location, where what you're photographing, where you're photographing it uh, in landscapes, you, you know, the, where you are. Generally, I like to call that the backdrop. That's the backdrop to the entire scene is your location. The other thing is um, a subject. Now, not all landscapes will have a strong subject in them, but, you know, usually you do have something as the subject. In this case, it's the city. In this case, the city. In this case, you know, it's maybe these... Um, kind of little, um, I don't know, I don't know what you call those, but these little buildings right here could be the reflections. Really, it, the subjects are a bit on, um, you know, they're not as strong in any of these shots, but that's okay. You don't always need a super strong subject. I mentioned that before, although some images would improve if you had a strong subject. So those are the two things right there. You have a location or your backdrop and your subject. But the third thing is light. And you could have the best location and the best subject, but if you have bad light, it's going to spoil the shot. You could have no subject, a weak subject, even kind of a crappy location. But if you got really great light, sometimes you could really get a good image still. So light out trumps them all. You really need good light. And in all these shots, they seem to be more towards midday. This one's still the strongest of all of them, I think. We still have some nicer light filtering through the clouds and the trees here. But then all the rest of them, we really don't have great light, particularly the city shots. And I mean, here we just have a lot of atmospheric haze. And I know a lot of times it's hard up for us to really be around, be at an area where we could get that good light. But you really, as a photographer and as you learn photography, you really have to learn to see light and see it at different times of the day and the different way it makes things look. So you could, um, if you pass some the same thing, let's say a, a similar thing every day, let's say you, you know, you ride a bike to work or something or you dry, even drive to work or whatever and you pass a building and the building's kind of interesting to you, look at it like on your way to work and how it looks in that morning light. Then look at it on your way home when it looks in the evening light, how the light hits it. Um, on you know days off, go by it at high noon, see what it looks like at high noon. Get an idea what the light does and what how the light looks at different times of the day. Now then you could add in some of these other factors like the you know in this case you know the sky you know we just have this vast sky here with really no interest nothing in it so you know you want to come back to an area when the sky is interesting if it, you, you know you're in an area like a desert area let's say where you rarely get any clouds in the sky well then you gotta minimize that you gotta point your camera down another thing I wanted to point out is in all these shots the horizon is r right in the middle just right in the middle of the frame is the horizon in every shot so what I'd like you to do Sabid is I'd like you to not just point your camera straight ahead I'd like you to try different angles. I'd like you to try shooting down a little bit more, cutting off some of this sky and get more of the water, or vice versa. If your sky is really interesting, 
point your camera up a little bit and just maybe have the bottom of the picture here forego these reflections and get more of the sky. And um, same you know thing here. Get different angles. You're it looks like you're standing straight up and you're holding your camera right up to your eye and shooting straight ahead. Well, try getting really low and you could try to really exaggerate some of these leading lines like here and you could do different angles and have things in the foreground when you're real low to add some more interest, visual interest to the shot and to help a leading line. And um, like he, especially here, this, this these city shots, there's really nothing in the sky that is compelling. So point your camera down and um, get some more of the buildings that more in the foreground and you know less of the sky and you know have your horizon way up here or so, you know something you don't have to have it in the middle as a matter of fact you really shouldn't have it in the middle try to position it in a different spot in the sky with the sky I'm sorry um, like this shot here now uh, again now light we have it's uh, like foggy or it's smoggy or it's pollution I'm not sure but it's it's a artistic effect, but I think you would have to work this scene a little differently. We have part of a bush coming up in over here. We have these power lines over here. It's kind of neat we had this bird flying through the frame right at that moment, so that's kind of nice. We have this, uh, looks like a cell antenna tower here. Maybe get closer and shoot more up. You could still get the sun in the sky. Um, unfortunately, I don't know if the bird would cooperate, but you'd get maybe close, more close-ups of the statues. So you, again, it comes to work in the scene. And if the sun isn't that great, you have to, or if the light isn't that great, you have to find a, figure out a way where you could uh, get it as attractive as possible. In this shot too, like we have all this vast expanse. Now this kind of serves as negative space a little bit more in this shot because of the pigeons. So we have these pigeons here and they're kind of just, you know, scattered about on this edge of this building. And then we have this big blank area up there. So it's a little bit negative space, you could say. And negative space you could take advantage of in an artistic sense, but still it's still a lot of nothing and it would be much more compelling if there was something interesting up here. I like how you crop this and you have the dogs off to the side and they're not you know right smack dab in the middle you know so they're off to the side a little bit so I really do like the crop and I like the idea and you know this I consider an art shot because it's not really you know telling a story and it's not um, you know, there's no like um, visual beauty of colors like a sunset would have, or textures like some, you know, things would have. But you would, um, you know, it's kind of a an art shot of two dogs frolicking. You know, so I, I you know, I, I, I think he did a fine job on this, and I like the crop too. This shot, I'm not sure what these are, but. Um, you know, I like the selective focus. You have this part really nice, strong focus, and back here it's nice, you know, blurred out a little bit. It was 1 1 25th of a second at f of 5.6 ISO 100. So I like this. The lighting, again, is kind of flat. We just have real flat lighting, and it's, you know, there's not, a, you know, a, a variety of color in this shot. We just mainly have, you know, these, whatever they are, um, you know, with that, you know, color going throughout the shot pretty much so it's an interesting shot I um, you know I like it I think um, again work the scene see if you get some different angles maybe cut out a little more of this cluttered background back here this shot here is kind of intriguing too this is kind of one of those optical illusions as you kind of look around and it just keeps spinning into the middle here so I'm not sure if this is built this way or if it's a mirror in there I can't really tell the only thing that really spoils we got this blurred out Thing right here and I'm not really sure what that is just being blurry right there and it breaks the lines so when you're you're really showing off lines here we got this line this line this line this line that line that line that line that you know as we go down but this breaks the lines and it's um kind of spoiling the effect that you're going for so I'm not really sure what that blur is right there but um I like the idea the artistic uh, vision you had trying to get it and um, you know again if you could take some different shots with different times of the day with different light we have you know some shadow coming in here but maybe there'd be some more dramatic shadows you know as the light is the sun or whatever is lighting this moves around 
to different areas. We're very bright over here. I think it's the sun coming through here. So, you know, it, it comes down to, you know, light. You really got to learn to see the light. You're, I think you're composing, you have an eye for the scene, but you just point your camera straight ahead isn't helping you. So point the camera down, up, get down low, shoot up, get up high, shoot down, do things like that. But you got to be really conscious of the sun, the light, how the light um, bays the uh, scene and your subject. And I think that would um, it make a lot of these shots a lot better. So that's it for Sabid. Thank you very much for sharing your work with us. I really enjoyed doing your critique. I'd like to thank everyone that watches all my videos. I really do appreciate it. If you guys have time, go over to anthonymorganti.com, check out all the photography stuff I have over there, and go to YouTube and subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'd really appreciate that. And that's it for now. I'll talk to you guys soon.